in the last lecture we learned a generalized way to model probability we saw an example also but which could have also been tackled with the old model of probability so today we will talk about continuous simple spaces and in this case we will see that the generalized model is really necessary Where do we encounter continuous sample spaces? Look at many different questions you can ask. We can pick a random number in the interval 0 comma 1. What is the probability that the number picked, say x, is greater than 1 by 3? This is an example of a continuous sample space event. You can also ask that you spin a wheel. what is the probability that the arrow lands in the first quadrant this could again be an example of a continuous sample let's take one more example suppose you are given a stick of length 1 meter you break it at two points and the question is Uh, what is the probability that the three parts of the stick after breaking it make a triangle so when you break the stick at two points you will get three parts out of it can the three parts make a triangle or not in all these examples the random thing which we are picking spans a continuous look at question 1 if i ask you the answer I think most of you would say that the answer should be two by three. But again, let's go back to our original things we have learned. So we should ask, what is the sample space? Even this should not be an issue for you. I think most of us realize that x is picked from the ring zero comma one, so our sample space omega should be. The set of all real numbers between zero and one. So let's try to define the probability distribution. If we want to do it the old way, we should be able to talk about probability of x, where x is an element of zero. What value should we assign to probability of x? The point is that probability of x should be equal to probability of y for all x by symmetry. All points are equally likely, so probability of x equal to k of y. And if it is any non-zero value, this implies that the probability of the entire set will become more than one. Actually, it will become infinite. That leaves us with just one choice. We say that probability of x equal to zero. That's what does it mean? So you see the problem. There is no way to define the probability of the individual element. But still, you were able to answer the question. You were able to say that the probability x is greater than one by three should be equal to two by three. The intuition comes because we know that if x lies between a and b, then the probability should be proportional to b minus a divided by the length of interval. And in this case, it will say that x is between one by three and one. This will be one minus one by three over one equal to two by three, and that is why we thought that the probability should be two by three. But how should we define the probability distribution function? And this is where our generalized model will come to the rescue. We will not define the sigma algebra as two to the omega, but we will define the sigma algebra as the set of all intervals. And the sigma algebra generated by it. That means we start with all intervals and do all possible complement and union options to find the sigma algebra generated by it. So this will contain all the intervals, union of intervals, intersection of intervals, and so on. All this will become part of the sigma. And for all this, we can define the probability. We remember that the probability of an interval should be 
alpha times i should be proportional to the integral and in this case the alpha should be equal to 1 because the length of the interval is just 1. This becomes really really clear in this case. Remember that we are not defining probability for all possible subsets but only for intervals and the in union and intersection of intervals. This formally lets us define the probability model. Armed with this knowledge, let's look at the example discussed in the first case. We are given a circle and an equilateral triangle inside that circle. Name the vertices as ABC and now you draw a random chord inside this circle. So the chord D is random. Question is, what is the probability that the length of AB is less than the length of the chord? And if you remember the introduction, we got three different answers for this. Now, with the clear model, now we know that why these three answers come into place. This shows us that the sample space is really important. If we do different sample space, then we get different answers. In the first case, our sample space is the set of endpoint of the chord. One endpoint is fixed at A, and we vary the other endpoint. So this is D also, and E keeps traveling around the circle. If this is the sample space, in this case, we see that the length of the chord is more only if E lies between B and C. So this gives us the probability of 1 by 3. If we change the sample space and say that our sample space is the center of the chord, if this is the new sample space, then the chord is smaller only if the center lies outside the circle. Other way to say it, the chord is bigger if the center lies inside the inner side circle. Now you can compare the areas and you will see that if I throw a random point, it hits the inside circle with probability 1 by 2. And now if we get the third sample space where it contains the distance from the center. So in this case, the distance ranges between 0 and R. And chord is bigger, this amounts to saying that the distance is less than R by 2. So this will give you a value of R. So we have three different sample spaces. Depending on the sample space, we get three different answers and none of them is exact. You might have a question, isn't there one-to-one -one correspondence between all these sample spaces? Remember, there were three sample spaces. One was the sample space of the endpoint, one was the center, of the chord and one was the distance of the chord. So there were three sample spaces and you can see that there is one to one correspondence. Shouldn't we get the same answer? No, that is not correct. And you can see it by a simple, simple example. What is the probability? Look at the question carefully. That x square lies between four and nine given I pick x between 0 and 6. There are two ways to think of this question. One is the sample space of 0 to 36 where x square is fixed random. In this case, x square will be between 4 and 9 and the probability would be 5 by 36. On the other hand, you have sample space is 0 to 6 where you pick x randomly. In this case, x should lie between 2 and 3 and the probability would be 1 by 6, which is different. 
So there's a much simpler example and shows that having one-to-one -one correspondence between sample space is not good. We should define the sample space clearly and define the PTM. So this defines the basics of probabilities. From the next lecture, we will talk about a slightly more involved topic, which is known as conditional probability. Thank you.